So, how do you become a dog trainer or a dog training instructor? Well, if you have skills and experience, you may apply to forego the foundation module via a resume sent to us before enrolling. This is common for people who wish to gain a formal qualification at certificate level. For new people to the industry wishing to begin a brand new career, the foundation module is mandatory. The foundation module can be either the basic dog handling and training skills module, which includes a practical workshop, or understanding canine care and behaviour, which is exclusively distance learning. Once you've completed one of those foundation modules, you're then free to enrol on any of the other modules within the programme. Our most popular certification is in canine professional instruction. This includes the basic dog handling and professional instructor skills and management modules, along with understanding dog aggression. Upon achieving this, the Guild of Dog Trainers will welcome your application to join them in what is a professional, fast-growing and dynamic organisation. The Pet Education Training and Behaviour Council offer a number of even higher standards using the CIDBT modules in their diplomas relating to dog training. For example, the Advanced Dog Training and Instructional Skills Diploma. This can be achieved by completing three modules with the CIDBT and one module, the Professional Practice Course, supplied and operated by the PETBC. For more details, please click the blue tab on the home page. Separate to the CIDBT certificate and the PETBC diploma that I've just discussed, we also offer the Advanced Professional Instructor Skills module. This takes dog training and instruction to the next level. Being a dog trainer can provide an excellent living and those who are progressive, client focused, innovative and achieve great results do exceptionally well. A large number of our students will start working in the dog training arena when they have completed the certification in canine professional instruction. Some go on to the Pet BC diploma thereafter. For the majority of our students, once they've completed any of the qualifications that I've just described, they generally start working in the dog training arena in some form. The majority do, however, continue to study with us, moving more to the behavioural side of training in order that they are able to expand their dog training businesses along with the services that they offer. As with all of our courses, we highly recommend that you are concurrently accruing additional knowledge and hands-on vocational work. This may be by volunteering at a dog training class or a local rescue centre, or many of our students indeed work with dogs in other capacities, such as being a dog groomer or working in a dog daycare. If you do have any questions, please view the FAQ section of the website here, or email us via the contact page here. Here are some examples of what our students say about the dog training and professional instruction courses that we offer. Dogs deserve to have people who know what they're talking about, especially if they call themselves trainers and behaviourists. The Cambridge Institute provides that knowledge, which is the essential starting point for fair and balanced dog training. So that means qualified people, people who've studied, and people who've been instructed by those who know. People who accept that dogs are hierarchical animals, that they have a sense of fairness, and they also need payoffs, pleasure and rewards, and they need penalties when they behave badly. That balanced approach to dog training is one of the key marks that you'll learn at the Cambridge Institute. And that is my mantra. My name is Jo Croft and my background, my career in dog behaviour started at the age of 11 when I started a small dog walking business. Uh, that catapulted me into wanting to be a veterinary nurse, a career which I did for 17 years in total. Towards the end of that career, 
I had looked into doing dog behaviour classes and dealing with dog aggression cases in practice. And from there I decided that I wanted to, be, wanted to look at cases in a bit more detail and work on a one-to-one -one basis with clients. So during my veterinary nursing career, I was heavily into dog behaviour and decided I wanted to increase my academic knowledge in this field. So I sourced several courses with the Cambridge Institute of Dog Behaviour and Training and went about booking on their workshops and doing their theoretical work. One of the big things in practice that we deal with was dog-to-dog -dog aggression. One of the workshops that I did was dog-to-dog -dog aggression as it was something that was quite important within my field of work at the time. Within the workshop we worked with live dogs, we were all questioned on our ability and we were given strong guidance by the instructors at the time. We were given real life examples of case studies to deal with and put in front of the case to question the owner, make an assessment and then set behaviour modification programmes. The instructors on the course watched us do this and talked us through the necessary requirements for achieving a positive result. The clients as a result afterwards were then monitored throughout to understand how our behaviour programmes worked in practice and in real life. I am um, a primary school teacher and I've been studying with the Cambridge Institute of Dog Training and Behaviour. I've always been interested in dogs, worked a lot with rescue dogs, had a lot of dogs of my own, which led me to want to study, broaden my theory and work alongside trainers and, and move into that sort of career. So it's something I, I do alongside my teaching job. Um, I've done the aggression courses to date and I'm continuing my professional development. Um, in the workshops you meet people from diverse backgrounds which is really interesting. At the last one I attended I met somebody from the Wolf Trust, um, a police dog handler, uh, pet dog trainers and it's interesting to come together and share your viewpoints and your experience and, and have an opportunity. Sometimes dog training is quite isolated and you feel a, a bit like an island operating on your own. So it's nice to meet with people from your sector and share all your ideas and experience. On the dog on dog aggression, um, we looked at the different causes of aggression, why dogs react the way they do and how best to help owners and dogs overcome the situation. There's a really important human element in this because it's very distressing for people to watch their dogs at, at, engaging in fights with other dogs. It's very dramatic and it's very scary. So it's useful to, to sort of understand the owner perspective as well as the dog perspective. And in contrast um, with the dog on people aggression, you have to be much more aware of the legal ramifications of owning an aggressive dog. So the course covers that. It also covers the causes and possible solutions for dog on people aggression. Um, and again, it's a, it's a sort of covers all the different angles that you need to be able to, to take those cases on, as well as give you safety tips and the confidence to be able to address what is probably the most challenging situations you'll be faced with. Outside of my teaching job, about 18 months ago I contacted a gun dog trainer, because I'm particularly interested in gun dog training, called James Rivell, who took me on in a sort of a mentor role. Um, we started together to do one-to-ones and I assisted and from there I grew into doing my own classes, running small groups and doing um, behaviour, basic training and gun dog training. My name is Christina and I'm originally from Latvia. I came to UK 12 years ago now and I work as a dog trainer and behaviourist at the moment. I got involved with dogs in my early childhood where I was brought up in a farm surrounding with loads of German shepherds, farm dogs, working dogs. So when I came to UK, I felt deep passion for dogs and I was looking to get involved with dog training and behavior. It comes from a passion. At the moment, I work as a dog trainer, one-to-one -one with the customers at their houses, in their parks, and also I do dog behavior consultations for behaviour problems uh, at clients' homes. I really like Cambridge Institute. Uh, tutors are really friendly, 
helpful and courses are written in a really good way so it's easy to work through them uh, it's really easy to understand what, what you need to do to achieve your qualifications so I really enjoy it uh, workshops are joyful uh, fun educational really enjoy it attending workshops you have opportunity to meet people that are passionate about dogs and work in the dog training and behavior as well so you build your network through, throughout the workshops whilst learning currently i'm working uh, for dog training and behavior diploma which is uh, recognized by pet education training and behavior council I'm a member of a Guild of a Dog Trainers uh, Association, so potential customers can find me through their website. Also, I have my own website where potential customers can find my services and contact me through there. I enjoyed the courses with Cambridge Institute of Dog Training and Behaviour very much. And the reason for this is because the courses are very well organised you know a clear deadlines and um, understanding of what is requested of you and also I'm extremely passionate about dogs so that helps you to get through the courses. As you have just heard, many of our students have successfully established new careers in this industry. If you have any questions you can email us via the website here. Once you have checked out the FAQ section which is here. As you've seen, becoming a professional dog trainer can be a particularly rewarding career and we look forward to welcoming you on our courses where we cover all aspects of teaching people and dogs and to help you to develop a new, successful and enjoyable career.